Back in the 1980s, when I mobilized the United Mine Workers to end apartheid in South Africa, I never dreamed I'd be singled out by the Institute for Policy Studies. And honestly, the recognition is humbling more than anything else. For one thing, my fellow honorees are incredible. It's an honor to be listed among them. Para la Iniciativa Mesoamericana de Defensoras, porque es el primer reconocimiento de la importancia de nuestro trabajo en Mesoamérica. And we work in immigration issues, we work in civil rights issues, we work to fight uh, against poverty in this country. We've made some really, really exciting progress. And one major piece of progress actually started on stage at the Latelier Moffitt Award when Secretary of Labor, Eliso Lees, presented us with the Latelier Moffitt Award. Creo que fuimos eh, vistos a nivel de todo el mundo a través del reconocimiento que el IPS otorgaba a la Mesa Nacional Frente a la Minería y a El Salvador mismo. And from that moment on, we worked with her office to move forward the home care rule change, which became one of the most important victories of the Obama administration and just went into effect earlier this year, bringing 1.8 million home care workers under minimum wage and overtime protection for the first time since labor laws were put into place in this country. The time that we received the award, we were a very small nonprofit organization. And it helped us, it gave more credibility. And we started to grow the organization little by little. Now we are the largest Latino and immigrant organization in the Washington DC area. Today we have 55 affiliate organizations around the country. We are expanding to another different states. We are now in 38 cities and 19 states around the country. We have 80,000 members right now. Huge, huge victory and it all started on stage at the Latelia Moffitt Awards years ago. And since that point, um, I mean, so much has happened. In 2012, that was around the time of the, the travesty down in Sanford, Florida of Trayvon Martin. And so with myself and a number of organizing activists on the ground in Prince George's County did, was we reformulated the Prince George's County People's Coalition. And then a year later, is when the verdict in Sanford, Florida came out, uh, we were a part of a number of organizations that pressed on the Justice Department to do the right thing. Uh, and to investigate that department and to do what they could through their civil rights division to get some justice uh, in that case. This year, definitely marked by the conclusion of the investigation and successful investigation and, and trial uh, for the assassination of Victor Jara. In January of this year, the United States deported back to El Salvador a former Minister of Defense, General Garcia, for his role in some of the most emblematic crimes during the El Salvador Civil War. In February, a magistrate judge ruled that another minister of the High Command of El Salvador can be extradited to face criminal trial for his role in the murder of the six Jesuit priests, their housekeeper and her daughter in El Salvador in 1989. I also learned about how much memory and truth uh, is still needed in Chile uh, to really complete a, a transitional justice or a process for their people to breathe and to feel that they have done it. And we are still very much working uh, to achieve that. We've continued to press both in the state of Maryland and in Prince George's County for reforms, to get citizens on internal trial boards, to bring some strong investigatory power to civilian complaints, uh, and to be engaged in that legislative process, not just legislatively, but also empowering citizens to take direct action. Y sobre todo me hace tener esperanza esa construcción que hemos venido haciendo, que es el encuentro, la articulación, las redes, los espacios, el eh, hacer posible que las juventudes de Honduras puedan entender que es necesario conocer el trabajo de los derechos humanos. La lucha con una perspectiva de género y de transformar este mundo patriarcal, machista y misógino en un mundo con justicia social y con respeto a los derechos humanos de las mujeres. The intersex, on issues of sexism, the intersex on, on gender issues, transgender issues, the intersex around issues of class, uh, they struggle to be intergenerational. 
You know, so that's inspiring. We need to be ready to go to a hunger strike in front of the White House or in Congress. We need to tell President Obama, you need to stop deporting more than two million people. We need to tell the Congress, the Republican Congress, don't be they, that racist. And people are ready to fight. And people are ready to keep fighting for justice. That is what gives me hope every single day. We can overcome the terrible legacies of abuse and violence. We'll do it with activism, negotiation, persistence, and clear-eyed research and analysis. We're committed to doing our part to help win a future where decent work, dignity, basic rights, and shared prosperity are available to all. Thank you.